Hey guys, we got ourselves a food packet long range patrol beef hash menu number one packed by the Steel Bag Company in Rochester, New York. And um, the date of production on this LRP is April 1977. Let's check this out. I always slip my stuff from the back. I like to keep the packaging intact if possible. That's what you got in there. It's really lightweight. Weighs about half of what a regular MRE weighs. I actually believe it weighs 14 ounces from what I remember reading. Let's see what we got here. These accessory packets usually contain more than just your coffee, creamer, sugar, etc. There's a little more. There's your side items, times cocoa, beverage powder. Yes, and in this case, we have accessory packet number one. Cornflake bar, orange, oh nice. Cocoa beverage, matches, coffee, cream, sugar. And of course you've got this outer sleeve. If anybody's wondering what that's all about, it really, it, it protects the entree from getting pinholes. It helps keep the napkins and spoon. See, they put the napkin and the spoon in there. It keeps it all in place. So then they have enough space to put in other items in the accessory packet other than just your typical napkins and coffee creamer, sugar, gum, matches, and whatnot. So that's what it looks like laid out before we're going to actually open the accessory packet first. Got your napkins and just one little pack. That's swell. Quality Packaging Supply Corporation, Rochester, New York. Beef hash. Check that out. You can get a pretty good look on those ingredients. Oh yeah, monosodium glutamate. They took that out in more modern freeze-dried entrees. So let's give this a look. First thing you do with old accessory packets to really get the full effect, bury your nose in there and get a good whiff. Mmm, smells like cocoa and a cornflake cereal bar orange flavored. I can just smell that overpowering tone. Oh, nice. I was just talking about one of these the other day when I had that other set of components made by Van Brode Milling. Well, it looks like Coffee Instant Style 1 Composition 2 wasn't just in the 60s. I was wrong in that last video because they were using it up through the 70s. Tenco was still packaging it. It does look a little bit different in the text layout, but it is ultimately the same exact thing. They give you two coffees, but only one sugar. So that's approximately three grams of sugar per coffee if you were wanting to spread it out. Your cream substitute is a little hard and solidified. I will not be using that. That's not going to mix properly. What'll happen is it'll chunk up and there'll be these weird little curdly creamer bits. It's not pleasant. Of course you have matches. White striker. Oh, and the old match packs had the striker. Same side that the instructions were on. The other side was always blank. DD Bean and Sons switched that later on. This feels like it's just fine. DMP Corporation. I've only seen this brand once. Now granted, cocoa beverage powder and the older brown packs have been around since the B unit days of, you know, C rations, MCIs. All right, get some hot water here and put it on a tray. All right, that looks good. We're gonna try out the cornflake cereal bar first. See how it's looking. This appears to have oxidized slightly more in color and appearance, you know, gotten darker over the years than our previous cereal bar. And this one's actually nine years newer. It's all about storage conditions. Looks good. Give it a shot. I've had one of these before and really enjoyed it. Let's see if this one held up as well. It's relatively unusual of flavor. I mean, it's like eating cornflakes with a slightly artificial orange flavored undertone to it. It's really not bad. It's something that you're not going to really be able to find nowadays. I don't know of any orange flavored cornflakes cereal bars that are sold commercially, so it is some sort of a delicacy in its own right. I actually thought that was pretty good, and I will be finishing the rest of that after the shoot. Going to go for beef hash next. And give you one more good look of that cornflake cereal bar. Now, I'm not going to break that one up and make a porridge of sorts out of it. That wasn't really my kind of thing, personally. We're gonna go for this beef hash next. Let's check it out. Let's listen to that vacuum hiss. Mm. 
There was one. I hope you guys could have heard that. From over wherever you're at. Let's see. Hmm. Smells kind of stale in there. A little strange. I'm not exactly sure what that is. But let's get this out of there and evaluate what's going on. I don't like the smell. It's just kind of undesirable. Yeah, there's just something a little off. Something smells strange with that. I can't quite put my finger on it. I don't know if that's normal. Nice close up of that. Let's add some hot water to it and bring it back to life. All right, let's see what we got going on here. Hmm. Now it says here, I'm guessing it says add, oh, 13, not 12 ounces of water. We'll see what we can do, not make a mess here. Personally, I like to add a little bit less than instructed with water to any of these dehydrated meals. And then you kind of mix it in and see how much more you need. It always beats a little bit of crunchiness over overhydration. But then again, folks like Jerry Sullivan, who actually had to use these things when deployed in Vietnam, he begged to differ. I mean, you would drink every last bit of the juices and everything. And water's a very hard to come by resource in the field, especially in tropical conditions. You'd think, you know, oh, we'll just use your water purification tablets. Well, you'd have to double up on your iodine. The water's infested with malaria, most likely in a lot of these conditions. Say you're in a desert environment, forget it. It's even more difficult. And Arctic conditions, you're gonna have to use fuel just to burn, or well, just to heat up your water. And that's going to be more weight and resources required out in the field before fully hydrating the, the entree. Let's give it another look. Oh, that's a classic when it steams up the <laughs> I'm always having to deal with that with old photo shots on MRE info. You know, actually, this smells good now. Oh, yeah, I'm going to eat this for sure. That smells really good. That's really nice. Let's add a little more water because it's going to need it. Yeah, that beef hash is really good. Sorry, my camera cut off real quick. Got to get that back on. Mmm, not bad. It's actually really decent, but with that bite, not to be gross, guys, but you will get some parts that are... Ugh, it's just a weird, griddly piece of fat there. It's kind of a shame, but not a big deal, really. And you, in the field, you'd be eating that, too. <laughs> you'd be eating every bit of this. I'll give you another look at that. I mean, very simple. It's just ground beef and potato chunks. Hmm. Another piece of grizzle. Yeah, see, I don't like grizzle. Some folks actually like that, I think. Anyways, well, let's give the uh, hot chocolate a taste. Packed by DMP Corporation, Mobile, Alabama. Perhaps I added too much water. It's just a little thin in flavor. It's not bad. It's enjoyable. It has a nice chocolatey flavor to it. It's a decent hot chocolate. But if you bought it in a store and you take that home and you're making that, you're like, well... If I compare this to Swiss Miss or something, I think the regular commercial brand would win. Kind of lacking. I think regular modern MRE hot chocolate is better. But again, I think I may have added too much water with that. Something that kind of happens a little easily with those hot chocolates. You really want to just stick to six ounces, and I didn't really give a measured amount there. The beef hash really has a nice savory, salty flavor that I think this would be perfect for a breakfast meal, you know, and really any time of the day. I actually really like that. And considering this is my dinner again, gosh, I'm really living off this stuff recently. But then again, I've been living off rations for a long time, so... I mean, if, say you took away all the rations that I've eaten in the past, like, five years, I'd probably weigh 10 pounds less. Sorry, guys, this is gross, but... Yet another amount of grizzle. So... It's kind of low quality cut beef. I mean, it's not like they really cared when they shredded that up. They threw in everything. I'm not really sure of what cut of beef it is, but again, it's not the utmost quality. 
They weren't really concerned with giving the troops the highest quality cut beef. Trying this out again. I really like it. It just has a nostalgic kind of flavor to it. I mean, I think it's because you rightly know that they no longer produce it, and you're not going to be able to find it anywhere. There aren't many of them left on the planet, nor are there many beef hashes left. As I'm eating this, I'm picking up more and more of the artificial flavor of orange. I'm not going to say it's unpleasant, but it's not exactly my number one choice for a cornflake cereal bar flavor. Not exactly sure why they gave it an orange flavor. I think they would have been better off just not flavoring it at all, but perhaps that menu variation was essential for those guys. But I can imagine the poor dude getting stuck with the orange cornflake cereal bar that they've eaten a hundred or more of. You have one of them. That's okay, but these guys had to live off this stuff. If I had to live off this, I wouldn't be too happy. You know, they had six menus back in the day with LRPs. They came 18 to a case. All right, it's not like MREs now or LRPs nowadays where it's 12 to a case. It was 18, six menus, and this was the variation you'd get. It was cornflake cereal bars or chocolate discs with toffee or almonds or those fudge bars, vanilla or chocolate fudge, and none of those are still good. I've read guys telling me that those things were never good. Then again, though, come to think of it, there was one guy, a dude Randy, I was talking to at a local flea market. He said the vanilla fudge was amazing. I guess to each his own. That is just some grizzly beef. And that's for the coffee instant type. Oh, this is coffee instant type one, style one, composition two. I looked at it wrong. Let me show you the Food Packer Survival Abandoned Aircraft coffee. I've got it right here. Let's compare. There are quite a few different variations of this coffee. See, there's the one 1977, this is 1968. See that? Now, let me show you something else, right? This is a 1968 C ration version. It's funny, I just got this stuff laying around. See that? Soul Cafe Manufacturing Corporation, Jamaica 33, New York, USA. So, this I believe was 1965, if I remember correctly. And then here's something neat, right? 1988, the last year of the as the ascorbic acid sprayed coffees, they took it down from 2.5 grams here, you see? 2.5 grams net, down to 2.2. This one is the one to look for. This is really good coffee. I mean, the acidity was lowered significantly and balanced, and it's the kind of acidity you look for in a coffee. So, let's put this up in order of age. 1965, 1968, 1977, 1988. I'm not going to do the coffee in this review. I'm going to save it. And we're going to do a coffee tasting extravaganza video pretty soon. Yeah, sounds pretty exciting, doesn't it? Well, anyways, this was a 1977 long range patrol ration beef hash menu one. This is Steve1989 from MREinfo.com. Thanks so much for watching the videos, guys, and subscribing. This has been really cool. And make a comment, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll answer to you, and we'll talk, you know, we'll talk about this thing. Is anybody out there that had to eat one of these things? Let me know. I mean, that's always fascinating. I really love everybody's comments. Let it be known. Get it out there. Although these things have been documented by Gundog, who's done fantastic reviews. And I believe a few other people with the LRPs by this point. Gundog's reviews are awesome, guys. If you don't already know about them, which I'm sure 99% of you who's watching my stuff knows about Gundog 4314. But if you somehow don't, check out his stuff and subscribe to him. His work is amazing. And he's documented a plethora of rations that are like right up my alley on interest. It's like you can just sit there for hours. Be careful, you know, because next thing you know, you're like past your bedtime, you know? Anyways. Beef hash. One more look at this monstrosity. Get going here. Look at that. Mmm. Beef hash from 1977. You know, that was the same year Star Wars Episode Four came out. Huh. Just realized that. A New Hope, you know. Everybody knows that. Oh yeah, I'm gonna enjoy this. Some hot chocolate and a beef hash for dinner. I'm a happy guy. Right on. Alright guys, thanks so much for watching. Hope you have a great day or evening, whichever is the case. And I'll see you soon with something new. Alright, cool. See ya.